Tommy Olsen. Hello! Is it 053 or 058? It's zero. Zero. Or no, it's O. Tommy O. I should probably shut that shit down. I gotta share it. Smash the share. <clears throat> Tio! <laughs> bro, look at that fade. Look at that. Oh, dude. just uh, looking like a bro, million it. fucking bucks right now. Holy you guys, fuck. you want to see my? You guys want to see my uh, parent or my dad's office? It's so fucking sick. Let's yeah. See it. Okay. Can you turn Hold your on, camera sideways for me? Turn as your well? camera sideways, Tio. Okay, relax. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take a look at this. So, so here's my dog. This is George. Hey, George. All right, so this is it when you walk in. So it's all go out, right? So that's an old pick. It's golden go for drive. Here, check this out. After we beat, uh, when we got the X, there's my old thing. There's my old glory days. Oh, look See at that, that brute. Come on. Oh. That, guy, that guy gets it right there. <laughs> look at that. That's, that's me back. Uh, this is me freshman year returning a kick at USC. Isn't that pretty sick? Oh wow! Short this. kick. Yeah. That There's that kicker's not that in the shit. league. Look at this. When did yeah, you man, win the X? And then that's all my dad's stuff over there. Just a lot of stuff. Holy! Wow. Oh man, you're yeah. dialed in. See the jug right there? And that. I dope? see the jug. We got to flip flip it the other way. I don't know what Tevin was talking about. It's yeah, hard to flip see. It back. This there, way? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Because you might yeah. have the rotation locked or something. I don't know. Oh, I do. Okay. Should I unlock it? Yeah, unlock it. Oh, unlock it. Let's try that. Oh, there it is. Wide screen. What do you get when you put two minutes? That's wrong. All right, so what's going to happen, Tommy? We're about to go live here, and then there will be like a little intro, then we'll welcome you in, and then we'll- We ain't going live yet. He was fucking up back there. We're already live. Yeah, Can we swear on here? Oh, fuck. Swear away. Just so you guys know, we're already live. The more you share, or the more you swear, the redder Greg gets. Green Bay Greg. That's what it's all about. That's the ugly guy in the Wisconsin shit right there. The Scani over here. We already took care of him. fuck him. Fuck him. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, Greg. Oh, I love it. He's telling me. I didn't realize we were having vanilla ice on the show today. Oh, (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Don't (laughs) hate on him. Gave me shit for my hair too. He goes, "It's too poofy." I go, ah, "Kill yourself." Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. The flow. Oh, the flow, though. <laughs> sure. Sure. Fuck. Fuck Nordo, though. Yeah. What the fuck? What happened? <laughs> so he called. He calls me yesterday, and he was super apologetic. You know, I just had to give him some shit, but he's like, "Look, I do this for a job. I always have it lined up." He's like, "I fucked up." I just wanted to apologize, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, Matt got Tommy O lined up, so. Yeah, the GOAT. We're good to go. Let's go. The GOAT. Let's go. All right. Let's fucking run this. Yeah, we've been fortunate enough to have some some good, a ton of K-Fan people. Fuck, we've had yeah. Micheletti, Lieber, Sauce, Nordo. Sinekin twice. Cine, you. Damn, you guys. You guys are doing good. We're doing all right. We're trying. We're, we're big man. time, Tommy. Tanner Morgan, we had him on the show. You had Tanner Morgan. Tanner. On oh yeah, yeah. He, did he did it from his sure. car in Kentucky. Why not? Why, would Why you? not? I think his dad That's was great. driving him in his car. Yeah, he was driving. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you guys? Uh, are you guys? Are, like, where? Where can I find your guys' podcast? So we go live on our Facebook page, YouTube. Live so basically, everything on social media is at Twist Sports Talk. Yep. Our website's okay. twistsportstalk.com, YouTube, Twist Sports Talk, Facebook, Twist Sports Talk, everything. Good shit. Yeah, That's so great. It's going to be lit. Is this you guys' full time jobs? Fuck. I wish. No. Fuck. No, we just go do it every Saturday. Um, You know, we've been doing it for almost a year now. Yeah, this is episode 45. Yep. So we started, 45. yeah, we started doing it uh, out of my Dick office, Donald. and then we linked up with Tevin here um, in Northeast Minneapolis at NBC Studios. So he's in the oh, Northeast, you guys. I live at Millen Main Apartments, right there. Not oh, the crack shit. shop a- across the street there. No, I don't think so. Off of what street, Tommy? Uh, do you know like the cobblestone, like St. Anthony Main Road, right there? No, but it sounds bougie. It's bougie. It's pretty bougie. Is uh, that, off, is that over by? It's up by Stinson Stoner, and Broadway. And like, 
Do you guys know like Hefe or Prakna or Aster Cafe? No. No. Nope. Well, fuck me. Holy yeah. God. <laughs> he lives in Shakopee. I live in Blaine and Mike lives in Iowa. Yeah, we're the Burbians, bro. We're the yeah. Burbians. The only time you I ever understand? came over north was to pick up heroin back in the day. Let's be honest. You're lucky. I mean, <laughs> Sick brag. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> holy fuck. Tevin. Yes. You ready to rock? I, I am ready to rock. Let's so go. we won't have the NBC intro because it's fucking up, but we will have your guys' intro and we'll kick this bitch off. Let's go. I, f- I still feel like I don't have enough juice, but fuck you're, it. You're fine. Fuck off. No, let her rip. Fuck them. Let's rip it. <laughs> All right. And... All right. So we'll bring you back on, Tommy, after we introduce you. You'll All just- right. Oh, sorry. I'm, I muted him. Beautiful. But we are about ready to go. One second. MBC. Well, that was good. Thanks. That was a good one. Thank you. We don't need their intro. You right, got you're your own. F- fucking songbird. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Welcome, I'm having flashbacks from my twist dream the other night. I'll have to tell you about it during the show. It was rowdy. You had a twist dream? Yeah. I woke up from anxiety. What do you get when you put two Minnesotans and a guy from Wisconsin together? Twist. Twist. The Week in Sports Talk. Get ready for some sports chatter where there's sure to be laughing, arguing, and maybe even crying. No. No. Here are your hosts, Mike Reeves, Matt Benz, and Greg Green Bay yes. Bauman. Gas, gas, gas. What do you get when you Roll put two Minnesotans and a guy? Are you feeling it? I'm rolling. Are you fired up? I'm rolling. Let's go. Apparently, you guys got a game tonight. Oh, episode 45. The Donald. When I come back like Jordan <laughs> wearing the 4-5, it ain't to play games with you, Greg. How about the president? Uh, uh, you. Spitting bars for weeks. So first and foremost, this is a huge jam-packed episode. We've got a star-studded guest. We do. The GOAT. No Nordo. No Nordo. Fuck Nordo. He, Love uh, you, but fuck you. Yeah, he... He canceled yesterday, but it's yeah. all good because uh, Ben Z over here. Line, are you? Why are you interrupting me? Nordo, Nordo doesn't cancel. He postpones. Yeah, Nordo's been on enough to not cancel. He just he'll just pick a different. We week. still love him. It's all yeah, right. It's not. Let's not just throw the guy into the bus. This guy thinks he can talk now because his Badgers won last night. Yeah. Nobody wants to forty five to. That. Speaking of 45, 45 to seven yeah. for whatever the hell. The, yeah. yeah, go ahead and spend three seconds talking to your Wisconsin demographic. Did you see All our right, qu- that's did you, it. Did you see our quarterback? Beautiful. Yeah. 14 let's for 14. Let's bring in the goat, Tommy Olsen. Let's bring what him up, in. Gang? What's up, buddy? What up? Yeah, fuck Wisconsin. How <laughs> about that? Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Oh, my God. You understand we got a, a you know, former golden gopher, Greg. Jesus. Uh, Have sh- some I, respect. I showed him some respect before the show started. Jesus. Yeah, you're shit. making fun of my flow. I think it looks swag. Oh, it <laughs> does. It's tripping, Tommy. It's it tripping. He's got yeah, a hot date it, right after this interview, does, okay? Yeah. It does. Tell you, I gotta go find Sess after this. You guys, I'm telling you, look at this lighting I got in my dad's office. This is brilliant. Oh, We're looking good today. Oh, oh yeah, uh, it's gonna be a hell of a day. I fucking love the juice. 45 Reeves, you're hitting bars as I used to. Oh, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Had yeah. to do it. He was. It's awesome. So Tommy, what is your plans for today, pregame, and then on to it? Where are you watching the game at? Stuff like that. So got up. Uh, I'm a big meditation guy, so I got my mind right this morning, and then uh, then I did a little yoga, Ooh. and then um, then I woke Sess up, kissed her, and then I went to work for a little bit. After that, came home. Now I'm at my parents' crib for a little bit, having lunch. Beautiful. Then I'm going back over to Sess's friend's house, and we're having like probably fifty-ish people come over. We're having a bonfire outside, clanking claws, and then we're then uh, then we're going to a game. Because if you guys didn't see, but it was my birthday on Wednesday. Oh, happy so belated happy birthday. birthday party today! Yeah, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be fucking lit. And oh. then gonna watch uh, the ghosts get the jug back. So I can't wait to watch. It. Woo! Oh. I love it. I love it. So for those of that don't know, Tommy, you won the jug. Yeah, funny you should say that. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> funny you should say that. I have it right yeah. here. 
Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah, um, there it is. So, actually, I won it at Michigan my senior year. Sick. That's fucking. It was weird. so fucking sick. And no, oh. did he pass? Yeah, yeah he's, he he's did. passed he's, away. Unfortunately, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah, unfortunately. So right. when when you win the jug, does every player get one? Yeah, so we all got mini ones. Okay. Yeah, That's so, so my sick. dad keeps it in his office until I'm grown up and get my own office. Oh, there, there you so. go. That's the way to do it. Because apparently they uh, do that with Tevin. Who who brought their uh, Steelers trophies in? Uh, Tyrone Carter brought his. Oh, TC. Yeah, yeah, TC. TC. So he travels in a Gucci bag <laughs> with his fucking championship trophies. So they must make sure. mini ones. Just like that, sick. Bro. Yeah, you know, if you if I won the Jim Thorpe and All American, all that shit too, I'd probably travel with it. But yeah, I was just lucky enough to play a little bit and was on the team, got the jug. So that's awesome. So what I want to hear then, back when you were playing, rivalry week, you mm-hmm. wake up in the morning. What is your pregame as an athlete for the team? Uh, like in the locker room. Well, or no, like, even like, like wake up. Wake up Smash some BK. What's going on pregame? Oh, so we are. <laughs> we <laughs> we yes. stay in a we stay in a hotel, right? Yeah. And uh, you got to go to the showers, and I, I always took a pregame shower, right, in our hotel room before we had breakfast. So we'd have a wake up call, like if it was eleven o'clock game, it'd be like a six a like a five thirty six o'clock wake up. Yeah. And uh, usually clear the cobwebs in the shower before, and then uh, feed the geese. Feed the geese, <laughs> get your mind right, and then uh, and then you get your pregame warm up stuff on. That's what I loved because I used to rock like I used to love Jordan shoes. So like I had like the Concords, I had the Space Jams. Like I took pride in like wearing like the sickest shoes, and then I had a flat brim, and then I'd put like all my my clothes. Like I'd put the new warm up on, and then we go down. And then I wasn't too hungry on game days. I usually feasted the night before, so I try to just get like a chicken and a little bit of uh, some sort of lasagna in. And yeah. then that was like three hours before the game. And then we go show up at the stadium like two and a half hours before the game. And that's a lot of times just sitting there at the at the field. Yeah. So you're kind of just sitting there and hanging out for like the first hour and like just going onto the field if you want to kind of stretching out, and then I would go out with the quarterbacks because I was the center, and then just go warm up with Mitch, and that's probably when I felt the coolest because, like, the stadium was starting to get full. Oh, yeah. And, like, you just re- – like, music was on, and you realize what you were doing, and, like, you're in the big house. You're like, holy shit. Like, this is what you, like, watch on TV, and then you're actually playing in it. And like that's when I felt the coolest. And then you go back in, and then when you're at Michigan, when you're at Michigan, like you literally, uh, you walk right by their locker room. So it's it's pretty scary because like growing up, you know how good Michigan is, and like yeah. then you're in the tunnel where they come out of. You're like, holy shit! And you can like hear them. I was like, God, I was, I was a senior and I was still getting nervous. And I was like, <laughs> all right. So then we go back in and then we all go out as a team and warm up together. And then we go back in one more time and then we go out and we play. And then like, it's walking out of that, out of that tunnel and seeing like 110 or whatever it is, is insane. It doesn't, it doesn't get as loud as you think, but it's just so many people. It's, and it just goes on forever and ever. And like, you, it's nuts. It's so cool. And then to end up beating Michigan, that was probably the biggest thing, you know, and then you win and you get the jug is the coolest thing in the world. So that's, oh. yeah, long story longer. It was super fun. Oh. Yeah, it was okay. awesome. Well, you can tell Mitch Leidner to stop viewing my profile on LinkedIn and uh, click accept because he's <laughs> he's not on any other platform but LinkedIn. So I found him on there, sent him a request. So then he viewed my profile back and didn't do it. It's like, look, I'm not reaching out for Minuteman Press. I'm <laughs> I'm low key trying to get you on my sports podcast, oh, Mitch. I love it. What the hell? I'll, I'll give me. I'll, I'll literally give you his cell phone. Like uh, he, oh, he would come on here so fast. Oh, I bet it's so brilliant. I love it. 
Let's yeah, he's see. such a good guy. Yeah, now yeah, he's selling metal now up in uh like up north in the Iron Range. Jesus. He's doing really good. Well, yeah, when you're on LinkedIn, you're you're Stack apparently an adult. Cheese. So I love it. <laughs> you're an adult with it. a good with <laughs> yeah, a good job. Guy. Yeah, <laughs> top notch. It's like you got a LinkedIn. Yep. Okay, we can still talk. Sweet. <laughs> you're right. Exactly. <laughs> when Greg and I met, we were like the only two people who had LinkedIn accounts. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Oh really? Oh yeah. Fucking LinkedIn, man. Yeah, Matt doesn't have a LinkedIn. No. I sell bread. That's what it's all about. Everything's about the bread, Tommy. Everything's about carbs. You sell bread? That's actually what you do? Yeah, yeah. I'm a route salesman for Sarah Lee. So buy Sarah Lee. All right. Oh, respect. Yeah, respect, fuck, bud. Yeah, fuck, fuck yeah. Fuck country hearth then, huh? Yeah, fuck yeah, them, guys. Yeah. Just Sarah Lee. That's It's all about it. Yeah. We try and support them. I'm not kidding. Sess has Sarah Lee all the time. Like the 95 calorie she bread. Does the delightful, she does God, the delightful like the bread. Tastes like cardboard. Cardboard. Well, there you go. Horrible. You can tell her. Yeah. Yeah. She's helping She's out great. Ben's every it. time. So what are your aspects of PJ Fleck and what he's done and kind of built as, uh, you know, his culture at the U? Dude, it's so sick. I, I love it. Everything about it I love. Like, first I was skeptic, right? Like, what the hell is this? Roll the boat stuff. I have no idea what it is. And then, obviously, I, I looked more into it, bought in. Um, the thing I love about what I've heard about and, like, seen and, talk to people about the two things, the energy he has. I, I'm a huge energy guy. I fucking love when people either, even if it's fake juice, I just don't care. I right. just, as long as you're bringing it, that's what I love. And that seems, it seems like he's wired. So I love that. And then the other thing that I really love about him, it seems like he actually cares what's going on. Like mentally, you know, like if like, if you're having a bad day or if like, you're like sad or just, can't get it up or like something's going on other than school, like school or something like, sure. It seems like he actually cares about it. And that's why I think it's a cool culture to be a part of. And that's why like, like I think it's like, I mean, obviously that's doing with our era too. Like even compared to when I was playing, it seems like the kids have more of a voice now for it. So, and he's adapted to it really well. Yeah. And I really think that's, I think that's awesome for the players to make such a comfortable situation and his door is always open it seems like and it feels like they can hug him and talk to him just normal like not off the record stuff and it just seems like he's really really good as a coach that way where it's almost like a father figure and then so that and then along with his energy and then on top of it he gets 11 wins it's yeah i love it it's awesome you exactly. know exactly you know, a lot. I don't know if that would work in the NFL just for kind of what he brings to the table. It's perfect for college football. You know, in, in the NFL, it's the three phases. You got your offense, your defense, your special teams. And what I love about PJ is it's about making men on and off the field, you know, mm -hmm. good grades, 100%. good faith. You know, he's, he's building a foundation not only with the program, but with these players, you know, that come after football too. It's like, look, Number one, it's about being a good man and good person right. and good good son and father and friend and partner and all these things. And that's what I love about him. And I don't think his juice is fake for a second. No. I don't think I think every player who comes here buys into it. We buy right. into it. You know, I think from an outside perspective, looking at it, maybe Tevin being the NDSU guy, you know, might think it's silly. But when it's your program, I think it's just phenomenal it's elite yeah it's fucking sick i love the juice like could you imagine that like it'd be hard not to have energy every day when you have oh, to be around right. it so yeah. like well, yeah and that's what i meant by fake juice even if you have to fake it you know right. eventually faking it you're gonna have energy so yeah. like if you smile enough you're gonna end up being in a good mood so you might as well just keep doing it you know it. see Greg, the fuck shut went to up NDSU? the minnesota people are talking i was about to who went to was... ndsu our Tevin. producer, our producer, hey, Tevin. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask uh, just a quick question, Tommy, because you went to Minnesota, obviously, from See, what, 2000, 2000, to, what, hey, 11 to 2014? Bison, but, yeah, hey, that's going. what we do. <laughs> we, we, I just want to, on behalf of Bison Nation, thank you for paying us to come down there and uh, lay the smack down. Tommy, on the don't Open. give into it. Don't give into it, Tommy. It's, it's all right. It's we always love. Every, every one of those players wish they would have played for the Gove, so I could care less what you think I mean, about hey, that game. Hey, that's fine. We always appreciate the opportunity to beat up on our little brothers. No, oh. have, 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 have fun up in Fargo. That's no, yeah, Fargo's not a not a great place to spend some time. But no, the Fargo's football team is I love it. 
I love it. No, that, do. that Fargo dome's sick. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we take our deposits and withdrawals at the bank. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Greg. Go, Go ahead, guys, Greg. Guys, we've beaten Power Five teams. Yeah, you guys play one every. 10 games, doesn't matter. Well, that's fine. I mean, I mean, congratulations Whatever. on your first, like, what, winning season in, like, 10 years. <laughs> Tevin, don't get rid of him. <laughs> we love Tommy. Uh, no, but Tevin, I, honestly, I can respect it. You guys actually, you guys have a storybook run you guys oh, are making right. right now, but. No, and even it's just a level below. You can't do anything oh, about it. Yeah, and it, even I remember like our first meeting before the Minnesota game. Coach Bull got up and said, like, you know, who have you wanted to go to Minnesota and got passed up on? This is your time to kind of prove it. So they definitely use the chip on their shoulder whenever they go to Correct. play oh, upper, sure. upper levels. Definitely. Go ahead, Greg. Okay, fine. okay, Tommy. So being from Wisconsin, I actually really bought into PJ because. As you know, every coach that we've had from Barry Alvarez on is that stoic, walk the sidelines, no personality, even crisp, you know. And then mm -hmm. after Penn State last year, with the way PJ reacted, I don't see him going anywhere. Regardless of 10 years of success, I think that he's a no. lifer at Minnesota. After that, I think Penn State was the game where he's like, this is my spot, I'm going to build that. You know, that reputation that Lou Holtz, um, Bobby Bowden, you know, Joe Paterno, sure. 50 years at one place. Obviously, I'm exaggerating. But do you think yeah, that... Yeah, like Lou Holtz, because he was here well, okay. and left. Okay, I was just trying to come up with examples. I get it. Guys. Yeah. My, my point is, is that do you think that after last year, PJ, who obviously had other opportunities, whether it was, you know, in the media or not, that he's here long term now? I, well, you know, I always hope that. Like, that's the dream, right? To get like a Kurt Ferentz, right? Or Alvarez or any of those types. You don't and want like, Ferentz. Just just to have them last forever, Lucky. Yeah. But like literally, <laughs> I w I wish I wish that he would. Like that would be the dream. But I'm such I just such a diehard golf fan, right? I've never missed a home game in my entire life, playing or going. Um, this is the first one I've never been there, and literally just even if he leaves. It must have meant that we had a good season. So I'm just like, fuck it. Like sure. at that point, if, if 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 he ends up giving us like a Big Ten ship, right? I I don't think he would leave. Cause like, what's better than this? Going to the league? I really don't think he wants to go to the league. I, don't I really don't. Right. I truly don't think he wants to go to the league. Especially if so, he builds this empire. You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. And then like, if if he builds this and he ends at the top ten like we did last year, there's no reason to leave. Correct. Where can you go from here? Notre Dame? Okay. What? You, yeah, so you get a lot more money. But once he gets his next contract, he'll ask for more money. If he's that good of a coach, we'll have to pay him. Yep. And so it's not – I think I think it's like literally it's it's like what you just said. I think since he got that Penn State win, you could definitely argue that he will be here for the long run. Because there's – at that point, if we're in the top ten, where is there better to go? You know, like right. so like, he's creating it, and it, he's making it so hard for him to leave because – the program's going to be so good. So, like, I truly, it's, it's probably the best problem we can have, you know? Yeah. Like, literally, we're, we're that good. It's so good. And, like, how cool is that? We're even just, just having this debate that we have God, a coach it's so now. much it's fun I, I to it. be relevant again and yeah. be excited about go for football. Right. Like, yeah. Oh. Right. That's what it's all about. I'm ready to run through a wall. I know you're ready to run Poor through a wall. Poor people and go. can watch the game tonight. Let's it's go. not 5 You don't even need to have cable. Kirk Herbstreit's yeah, going to yeah, be right. saying some Get shit. Your buddy is going. Let's go. Buddy, is Kirk. Let's go. Oh. Oh. Lee's putting on the gopher head again. He's putting on the goldie head. Yeah, as he should. Fuck yeah. Fuck Harbaugh. Yeah. He sucks. <laughs> Let's go. He sucks. Fuck you, Jim. All right, Tommy. Well, we appreciate you coming on, dude. You're just a stand up dude. You can catch Tommy's takes Thursdays on the power trip. Otherwise, oh, yeah. just just follow Tommy on fate or on Twitter. Tommy O. What is it, Tommy? Tommy O fifty three. Right and then there. Uh, I'm doing like a little uh, go for game day bit too. It's like second screen. I'll tweet everything out later today. But so, you guys, you guys are awesome. Honestly, I'll come back whenever. Uh, beautiful. This is this is really cool. I live right in Northeast, so maybe I could come in. Let's studio. get him oh, in. We yeah. would love You're that. Have to man. Come That'd in. be dope. Yep, that's what it's all about, Tommy. So hundred percent. You guys, thanks for being so tight. Is that is this it? Are we all done? We're this done, buddy. It. Go Appreciate on. you guys, my man. I gotta go take Seth to lunch, so I will Lucky. Uh, see you guys soon. <laughs> Happy Greg. Guy, my go Gophers. 
Fuck Michigan, fuck Wisconsin, and fuck NDSU. Yeah. 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 Peace out, Tommy. All right, later, bro. I was about to say yeah. happy birthday, but... Oh, that was lit. Oh. Tommy O. I didn't, think, I didn't think you guys could get more fired up than you were before the oh show started. God. Then you get Tommy O. He gets me so amped. Oh, yeah, he's great. I love listening to him. Just the fucking juice. I yeah. got it spilling out of my cup right now. Well, don't let that happen. I can't help it. Nice. He took it to you, Tevin. Yeah, okay, was, guys, I'm, I got to be nice to the guests a little bit. As you should, as let, you should. You I'll, almost scared him away. I'll, I'll, I I'll, thought I'll, he was about to come through the wall on you like the Kool Aid hey, man. He knows where to find us. Twelve twenty nine North Street. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, hopefully, hopefully, we'll get him in. Oh, yeah, no, he's a, he's a good guy. I like Tommy. Oh fuck yeah. We'll what bring we him, we'll bring him in for Wisconsin week. Why the fuck would you do that? Because he lives right down the road, Craig. You wouldn't get a word in then. The hell, I wouldn't. You barely did today. Well, yeah, because you let us have our fucking time. I let you guys have your Thank time. Thank you. I appreciate that. When right? Sinekin's on, you guys let me run the interview. Yep. Well, of course. Yeah, yeah, of respect. course we do. Yeah, that's respect. what it's all about. All right, let's get this shit going. Where do we got going here? Initials, right? All right, we're kicking it off today with the game of the week. We're going to play a little initials game. Yeah, fuck. Let's go. All right, this week's initials, we're repping KC. Nice. KC. So, let's go with item number one in KC. Clue number one. Once contended for a U.S. Open Championship. Clue number two. Has been seen in a baseball uniform. Clue number three. Was an American Prohibition agent. Greg, Kirk, uh, Kevin Costner. We were just fucking talking about him earlier. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. Fuck Kevin it. Costner. Kirk, Kirk Kevin Costner. I, I, was, we'll, I got excited because we'll, we were be literally little, talking about we'll it right before the show. We'll be Good little. for you, Greg. All right, item number two. Clue number one. Was briefly married to an Academy Award winner. Clue number two. In 2010, helped create a documentary about high school football. Clue number three. Connected to no shoes, no shirt, no problems. Matt! Kenny Chesney. There we go. Matt Benz on the board. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Next item. Clue number one. Born in Texas in the 1980s. Oh, this one's all Greg. The old fuck. <laughs> Clue number two. Appeared in a 2003 box office bomb. Clue number three. Has appeared on Saturday Night Live. Clue number four. Steve Carell once screamed her name. Greg. Kelly Clarkson. GBG's on fire this morning. Fuck! Ah, woo! Kelly Clarkson! <laughs> All right, next item on the list. Clue number one is a song from the musical Oklahoma. Clue number two has connections to Walt Disney. Clue number three has connections to Paul Rudd, Rob Matt, Mervin. Kansas City. There you go. You know what? I'm sitting there thinking it because it's the only fucking one I know, and I should have just done it like last week, just ring in. What do we got? What do we got? Two twos? Yeah, we are uh, Matt and Greg tied with two apiece. Cool. Why don't you go fuck yourselves? Clue <laughs> <laughs> number one. In a 2016 film starring James Franco and Christian Slater. Clue number two. Prominent in mythology and in some Asian cultures. Sorry, I read that wrong. Prominent in mythology in some Asian cultures. Matt? Yes? Kingdom Come? Incorrect. Matt is out for the rest of them. Clue number three includes a hood. Clue number four. Its diet consists primarily of snakes. Clue number five. Mike, King Cobra. Mike, on the board. Say it ain't so. In a row, score points. Go buy a lottery ticket. Wow. Go, sniper! Oh, oh. oh my God. last week didn't even count because Matt's tearing off paper. That was my first real. That one. was good. Yeah. Felt yeah. good. Oh, that, yeah, that one. Uh, yeah. Felt good. Yeah, that one felt like. Well, I guess Minnesota hasn't beat it. So you I'm earned that one. Fuck, I did. Tevin. <laughs> All right, the next item. Clue number one. They are asymmetrical. Clue number two, most are red, golden, or blue. Clue number three, often connected to Alaska. 
Clue number four. They, Matt? Yep. King Crab? There you go, Ben. Ben takes the lead with three. Damn. GBG fuck. two. Let's go. Mike, one. One. And we are playing to four? Five. 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 All right. Three, two, one. All right. Here we go. Born in... Clue number one, born in Illinois in 1988. Matt? Yep. Kid Cuddy? N- incorrect, but Ooh. I like where your head's at. Me too. <gasps> Thanks for giving me a free space. Clue number two, his nickname is a Star Trek reference. Clue number three, attended a Big Ten university. Clue number four, was a fourth round draft pick in 2012. Clue number five. Mike, Kirk Cousins. Mike, yes. Here yeah! we go. Wow. <laughs> Captain Kirk. That's probably, yes! Captain Kirk. Oh, that's probably the best that. thing Kirk Cousins has done for you. Oh, yes, it, is. it is. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Fucking I love tied. That you got that one. Yeah. I love that. I needed that. All right. You're tied now with GBG. Wow. With two. Fuck wow. you, Greg. Wow. Ben, <laughs> still in the lead with three. Yes. Clue number one. Born in Virginia in 1957. Clue number two has been seen on NBC, CBS, and ABC. Clue number three was inducted into the Television Hall of Fame in 2004. Clue number four in 2011 released the book The Best Advice I Ever Got. Matt Casey Kasem. Incorrect. That's K K. I, I didn't know if it was. The, I had to go. the rest of clue number four is in 2011, released the book, The Best Advice I Ever Got, Lessons from Extraordinary Lives. Clue number five. Once broadcasted her own mammogram to increase breast cancer awareness. Clue number six. American journalist, author, and TV host who is most famous for co-hosting NBC's Today. I, I can't I can't think of her name. I can picture her. What the hell is her first name? Well, if you know Three, me, I'm not. Two, one, and Doge with the win for Katie Couric, Katie ladies Cur- and gentlemen. Oh, oh, Katie Couric. Fuck. That's like the only Three, one. Three, two, I've... two. Three, two, two. And now the next item we've got. Oh, that's nobody's getting that They're one. They're going to get hard. They're going to get hard. Clue number one was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2014. Clue number two was once famously unplugged. Greg, Kurt Cobain. There you go, Greg. Now we have a tie at the top with Greg and Matt with three, Mike with two. You're right there. I'm coming. The Doge with one. I was thinking Kurt Loader. That begins with an L. Yeah, I know, but that's (laughs) unplugged, you know. Yeah. You know, clue number one. Occurred in Oregon. Clue number two. Involved in undercover detective. Clue number three. Was released December 21st, 1990. Clue number four. Bill Murray was reportedly approached about playing the lead role. Clue number five. Greg, kindergarten cop. There you go. GBG takes the lead with four. Boys have penises. Girls have vaginas. <laughs> Favorite line. Quote. Yeah. All right. Next item. Clue number one. Debuted in a breakfast cereal commercial. Kellogg Crunch, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> incorrect. Fuck. Fuck. Clue number two was in a film that included brain transference serum. Clue number three. Starred in Saving Christmas, a 2014 film which won the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Picture. That was pretty bad. Clue number four was frequently seen on the pages of 16, Tiger Beat, and Teen Beat. Clue number five. His sister was cast as a member on Full House. Greg, Kirk Cameron. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, GBG is your winner. Have some! <laughs> Good job, Greg. Good job. Oh, fuck off, Greg. Fuck you, Greg. You did good. I gave you a run. That's all I can you do. You gave me a run. And Mike Mike was worrying me for a while. And with that gracious win by GPG, <laughs> we're moving on to Always fire humble. cell. Always humble and modest. God. That's all right. That's all right.
right. You All did right. good today. Buy or sell? I did two. Yeah. Two legitimate ones. Yeah. It felt great. Felt it. Is it shit? Buy or sell? It's time to move on from Carson Wentz. You know, after Thursday night, you kind of have to say no because of the money you have guaranteed invested in. But I think that they feel better about themselves with the way Jalen Hurst is playing. That he could just go. Did he play center. it all Thursday? No, but he. But they. But they're starting to use him behind center. It's not like Taysom Hill, you know, where it's all fluky garbage stuff. They're actually playing him behind center. So if Carson needs a break, he's having a bad game where he gets hurt for two, three weeks. Like he has a tendency to do all the time. I think they feel better about themselves and his long term. The crazy part is they're still in the middle of division. That division. They're, they're is horrible. division. That's the crazy part about it. I think you still stick with him. It's just a shitty situation right now. The offensive line is in shambles. Miles Sanders just getting hurt. Elshon being hurt for decades. Yeah. Uh, Deshaun Jackson comes back, gets hurt right away again. Um, you know, their best target right now is Fulg. Who? Yeah. Exactly. No so, shit. You know, so that in of itself, and they're still winning their division, I think you would win with the Reds. Uh, yeah, I'm selling it. I mean, it's not... I'm not in the position of... I heard this on KFan earlier this week. It was a money guy took sports economics. And basically, even with the guaranteed money, once it's paid, it's gone. And that's not a dis- that's not a reason to not move on from something. You know, so in, in that case, the money doesn't matter to me. I, I do like his age. I think he, you know, he's an NDSU guy, Kevin. Um, you know, I think he's shown that, that he can get it done young enough to still do it. That team is in shambles. Yes. Not just Carson Wentz. Correct. It's over for T.Y. Hilton. Buy or sell? I'm going to sell it. Um, I think that, unfortunately, I wish, I was hoping and praying that the Rivers was going to have some form of change to the Colts and like, all right, give it all I've got left. I was hoping there was still some left in his tank. And it's proven to show there was nothing left in his tank. Um, it's another shitty situation for T.Y. Because T.Y. is the juice man. And you need a guy back there slinging a biscuit for him to get that juice. So, um, I still think T.Y. has got some left. I'm buying that it's over for him. I, I think that Andrew Luck got the best out of him. And I he's now getting to be a little longer in the tooth. So after this year... They're not going to have Philip Rivers, so who do you bring in? And is it going to be someone who has that connection with him like Andrew Luck did? I doubt it, so... Who? Fix Magic is as old as I am. Still the, 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 man's, the man's got to walk off into retirement and become a neurosurgeon. Yeah, I'm buying that it's over. I mean, he's actually staying healthy this season, which has been something in the past that he hasn't been able to do. And he's doing nothing. Nothing. And he's 32. Yeah, 32 years old. Yeah, that's crazy. So another quarterback, it's like he's just going to continue to get older. They have some good. They're a run first team. Yep. You know, with a defense like that, Zimmer should go coach there. That's primed and ready sure. for him. So I'm definitely buying that. Justin Jefferson is a better option for the Vikings than Stefan Diggs. Buy. I'll, I'll answer this first. Buy. Buy. Big time. Buy. There, All in. Th- Buy. There couldn't have been a better. He might not be the. Rook, the rookie of the year offensive, but he is the best pickup so far for a team's need. They Correct. needed to get rid of Stefan, and he filled in, and he is Stefan Diggs 2.0. He's electric. Yeah. Boogie, he, woogie, woogie. He may, and, and the thing is, is it shows how much of a team player Adam Thielen is because Adam Thielen is willing to run those dig routes, those inside routes, which open up Jefferson on the fight patterns, which is unbelievable. Aw, Taylor Benz. Hi, Mrs. Benz. That's Mrs. the wife. Ben. Mrs. Benz. Smoke show. You know you can say hello to us, too. Yeah, no kidding, That's Tay-Tay. Right. It's like, hi, Matt, and those other two guys. Yeah. Who, last I checked, were like a big part of your wedding. Yeah, well, Something one of like us that. was. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to... You were just tall. Yeah. Big you were a big part yeah, yeah, in that aspect. So I am going to buy. Buy. And I'm going to buy simply because he doesn't bring the drama yet. That's not to say he might not right. um, when Ego takes over. But as of right now, he's 
he's having fun. It was funny because the Vikings are shit, but he's still out there just like having fun. They kind of had him plugged up on the last game and he was on the bench. Kind of all these other guys are all pissed off because they're losing and he's just giddy. Do you know what I mean? Oh, he's getting his. Yeah. He's just like, I'm cute out there. Yeah. He's like, I'm cute. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's, I think he's a better option. The the impressive thing for me is his hands. Yeah. Well, see, that's the one thing that he's even getting rocked and like still, you know, holding on to it. So yeah, it's. The it's only, not as crisp as route running as Diggs because he's probably the best in the league at that. But sure. but Kirk, the only thing that Kirk Cousins has consistently done is in, in his career is throw a good fade route. And Justin Jefferson can grab that and get it. So it's actually making Cousins not look as like as much of a jack wagon. Well, as everything is. Cousins is getting this year is in garbage time. Correct. Yeah. But everything. S- but still, that's good for Jefferson to get that experience. Yeah, great for yeah. fantasy. Had I'm, the stats. I'm glad I uh, dropped him after two weeks I'm in one of my I leagues. So, I'll be, I'll, I'm, I'm more than happy to use him in daily fantasy. Derrick Henry is more valuable than Patty Mahomes. Sell. I think that he I I think that Derrick Henry is the offensive MVP that doesn't play quarterback in the NFL. But in the AFC championship game last year, you can see how if you shut him down, you it's it, you can still shut down a team. They put eight men in the box. They'll do, you know, they'll they'll, um, key the middle linebacker on him, whatever it is. You can shut him down, (coughs) you know, and and, and win a game. I I just, I don't think that he's more valuable than Patty Mahomes. I'm going to buy, and the reason why I'm going to buy is kind of piggybacking off what Greg just said. If you shut down Derrick Henry, you, for the most part, shut down the Tennessee Titans, right? If you shut down Patty Mahomes... They have Clyde. They have Le'Veon. If Patty Mahomes gets hurt, Le'Veon hasn't played a down for them yet. Doesn't matter. He you goes from got Clyde him. to Le'Veon, but not Kelsey, not yeah. Tyreek Hill. No, because, Hill. because if you shut down not- Patty, those guys technically aren't getting theirs. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. But even last year, you saw when Patrick Mahomes got hurt and Moore stepped in. Yeah, beat the Moore mics. can still win games. Anybody with all of those weapons can still step in and win, potentially win games. But Derrick Henry is questionably, right now, the MVP of the league. I don't think you can pick a running back to be the MVP of a league when you have guys like Patty Mahomes in the league. I think he's the MVP of the league that doesn't play quarterback. I'll give you that. I agree with that, but I agree with Matt where I'm buying. I look at this not from more valuable you know, to the league, but to your team. Right. And literally, the Titans went to the AFC Championship because of Derrick Henry. They, he literally yeah. ran through everybody, and I think even with that now, the Titans are just getting better offensively. Tannehill's sure. lighting it up, A.J. Brown. Yeah. They have, you know, good receivers. So, yeah, is Pat, you know, if I'm starting a franchise, am I going to take Pat Mahomes over Derrick Henry? Yes. 100%. Yeah. But, yeah, Derrick Henry's a beast, and it sucks for him that he lost two years. Maybe it, it works out better, but who was the back there? For two years, that was the old Cowboys De- back. Oh, it wasn't Dion. No. Uh, Cowboys, huge rusher, went to the Titans. Henry- Eddie, Eddie George. No, it was uh, Chris. I know who you're talking about. He was even played at the Chiefs, right? No, he he hasn't been in the league for a long time. Played for what least. running back did Derrick Henry play for that also played for the Cowboys? Debatable. It's great radio. This is what happens, man, when you get hung up on Son something. Son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, I can't I can't think of his last name either, but it was like, yeah, Chris, and he had the dreads that it hung is up the back. Chris. Like, no. No, he was a Cowboys running back, had a great year, and then went over to the Titans. Don't know. Marion Barber. Next. Oh my God. <laughs> next topic. No. You're gonna find it? Yeah. I'm I'll give you the next topic. Bell will take over the main role over CH 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 in Kansas City. Not sell. A, sell. Not a chance. Sell. Yeah, I think that uh Bell is on the team because it was the right price and it was to give CEH a break every now and again. I don't if he gets if he gets one. 100 yard rushing game for the rest of the year. I'd be impressed. Yeah. See, I think Clyde is going to get all of the workload except for third downs and goal line. 
Yeah. And that's unfortunate fantasy wise. Yeah. But longevity, Clyde is DeMarco still... Murray. DeMarco. There you go. So Good Chris you. something. You sniped it out. Fucking Chris, yeah, Chris. Buy or sell. <laughs> sell. Yeah. Le'Veon Swack. I think he'll have a good role. Sure. I don't think he'll get a 100-yard game for the rest of the year. I think that he's... Maybe I think C... It. No, CEH is a beast. He's so. good. It's like after after Clyde has like a 25-yard run, throwing defenders off, it's like, okay, go get a, go take a break and don't sure. get in there. For I the would night. love to see him come out and do what he... Because I, I think the Jets just tarnish everything that goes there. Fuck Adam Case. Yeah. You don't care for the head coach of the... Oh, no, I just, despise Adam He has a Adam kiddie Gaze. porn... You know, a VHS of the him. owner of the Jet. That's the only reason he still has a job. There's no and way. And I did hear a good rumor that the only reason that they're not firing him is because they don't want to promote Greg Williams. Yeah, that's definitely it. Also, they want to wait to hopefully dangle that number one pick to Biennemi and say... Biennemi will not. Biennemi wants to go to a team like the Vikings. Sure. That have pieces in place, that have I a good so. culture. I hope. Actually, yeah. You don't want well, to go to a shit show of the Jets. Or Houston. I think that Eric Bietam is going to end up in Houston. I do, too, because they have Deshaun Watson. Exactly. He wants his quarterback. Yeah. So it's I don't either, want to talk about it. It's either a Houston where they have one, or it's a team. Like Minnesota. Where you like, like Minnesota, if if they can get a good enough pick to where it's like, all right, I have a they have a top five pick. I can get one of the three quarterbacks. And I think that's what you need. You need yeah. a top five pick. Right. That's all I got. Good. Good shit. I like that. All right, now we're moving on to the busy week in sports. We're going to hit you with some twist headlines. <sighs> Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right, starting off with the headlines, NBA discussing changes for the 2021 season, including Christmas start, possibly fewer than 82 games this week. Just last month, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver set a goal for us next season is to play a standard season of 82 games in the playoffs, in home arenas, in front of fans. Please. So, so, um, Seattle Seahawks' Russell Wilson says he is, says Antonio Brown deserves another chance and is humble. Well, news, AB signs with the Bucks. One-year contract, your thoughts, please. I hate it. I don't understand it. I mean, it's, I get it. He's allowed to play. He's probably got the talent, but why go there? Exactly. You know, and it, it really fucks Tyler Johnson. He's just going to move down that depth chart. The only reason he's there is the only reason Gronk's there, and it's Tom Brady's. Bruce Arians came out last year when the same kind of talk came out. And he's like, Early this season. he's a clown. No, no he's not going to be on the sure. team. But Bruce Arians isn't the one making the decision. Right. It's, it's Tom Brady. It's 50-12. It's, it's 50. Goal. Yeah, it's 50% Tom Brady, and the other 50% means that Evans and Godwin are right. Yeah. yeah. It's and a nice... This is, it adds the depth. AB is still... Yeah, but I think so too. Oh, he's got he's got a plenty the, left. The, the Buccaneers are like the Lakers from what was that 10, 15 years ago when you got Kobe, Carl you get Carl Malone, you get Gary Payton. Yeah, you got sure. All these guys that are riding the coattails just to get a just to get a chip before they retire. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a one year contract. You got him for peanuts, and he's going to prove that he can either be in the league or not. He's going to prove he's a dumpster fire. They got him for peanuts. I don't think so. Peanuts. Peanuts. He's just. Weird. I thought he liked girls. I oh, we never know. Hmm. Well, not if they got him for a penis, so... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Greg's speechless at this point. He's just like, how do we veer? We I veered, just, Greg! I don't know, we yeah. veered! Yeah. Sorry. I think, I think AB is still AB. I don't think he will be a dumpster fire, and why don't I? Because he realizes this is his last chance. Should have gone to Green Bay, right, Greg? Should have gone to Green Bay. I, I'm super, no, I... Oh, I, not with the oh, depth that wide receiver. If no. you would have... If you would have gotten him, you would have been. So when was stoked. the last time Green Bay took a freaking uh, head case? Yeah, why would it, why would they take anybody? What do you Your mean? Your depth is so. It's not nobody. It's okay. him. It's so, no. Do they need a wide receiver? We were talking about this during the week. Yes, I think they need a wide receiver, but they don't need a freaking nutcase at wide receiver. This is his. Yeah, last they already chance. got one at quarterback. Should have yeah, been. I'm not a fan of past mistakes of Antonio Brown. Nobody's a fan of that. But he's still a B, and if you look at his stats, and if you look at what he does on the field, and if he can get somebody, if he can stay on the field, if he can stay on the field, he is still Antonio Brown. Yeah, but his mental or lack of mental that we knew of a year ago. Yeah, 
is a year ago. It can be toxic to a locker room. Did you ever hear about him before the Steelers marriage ended? No. No. That's what I'm saying. And all everything three unraveled of us, after that. All yeah. three of us have been talked about as head cases at one point in our life. Yeah. Yes. So we have to offer him the benefit of the doubt, saying that he is arguably one of the best to ever play in our generation at the wide receiver position. And he, as a decoy, is better than anybody that's active. That's what I'm saying. Adams on that roster. Okay. I'm not saying that the Packers don't need another wide receiver. I love the idea of them possibly trading to get AJ Green. I'm saying that with you, with the with your with the quarterback that the Packers have, yep. who's already this chip on your shoulder kind of a guy, yep. with the with the repu, with the relationship that he's built with these guys, you don't need a B on your team. You need a wide receiver, just not him. So well, tell he just me, the, went to the team that spanked fine, you. but uh, tell me the him. difference. Take him, and if they win a championship, I'll apologize. But I think he's going to tear apart their locker room. Understandable. But you were just telling us last week how you were you were wanting Odell. Yeah. So what is the difference between Odell? Yeah, Odell and likes to get because, in on. No, I I, will, I I want Odell because I think Odell Dude. is thirsty and hungry for a championship. Ooh, I, think I don't think I don't think Antonio Brown would know if he won a championship. I think he would. Ooh. But I I understand where you're coming from. Okay, Greg. But I still I think AB is still better than Odell. I don't I don't disagree. All right. I'm from, saying from, from from between today, the lines today mentally he might even be better than Odell. Could he's a fucking head case though? They both are. Yeah. Yikes. What yeah. else he got? Let's go on. That was good. I number like that. Th- number three. I don't number these. If you want them numbered, <laughs> they're numbers. highlighted. Sid he Hartman dies at age one hundred. Okay, so I did print off a little thing. Uh, Sid was very old. Hundred. Uh, yeah, I heard he had a big dick too. So good for him. <laughs> That's what I've heard too. So back in nine. So again, hundred years old. Yep. Extraordinary career and. Uh, printed off some nuggets because I didn't even know this stuff. So I wanted to share Love back that. in 1946 Hartman offered $15,000 to the owner of the Detroit gems of what was then the national basketball league to bring them to Minneapolis. He was 26 years old at the time Hartman saw that there was major interest in professional basketball and wanted to secure the team to Minneapolis. So Formed the Lakers, which I didn't know. So 26 year old Sid throws 15 grand, which was 46 was a lot of dough. Yeah. Um, to bring him over. And then they had the draft rights to George Mikan. So he was the first unofficial general general manager of the Lakers, won a championship before they left. Nuts. Dope. So a central figure in bringing the Lakers orchestrated a plan to try and get Celtics legend Bill Russell to Minneapolis, wanted to trade away several players in hopes of getting him. It never materialized. That move by the ownership caused Hartman to quit his job with the Lakers, but he later said that being the general manager for the team in those days was the most fun he had throughout his career. So until his death, he amassed 21,235 bylines per the Star Tribune count. Literally, one came out on the day he died. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's that was the joke that they were talking about at K Fan. Is Sid Hartman was such a legend that he'll still be doing articles for the next two or three months? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And you know what? It's at some point in someone's life, you just have to celebrate their life. You don't have to necessarily, unless you knew them personally, which I obviously didn't know Sid Hartman. Right. You can respect him in a lighthearted way, and yeah. I believe that he was so upset with the Viking game that he just didn't want to watch it anymore on Sunday. But <laughs> but it's because... How dare you? But it was because he was such a huge figure. I mean, sure. Brett Favre, Brett Favre openly said, and I'm not bullshitting, he openly said that one of the reasons why he wanted to come to Minnesota was because he respected Sid Hartman so much. Sure. Oh, the respect was... And he would talk about Sid. He would always, if you ever go back and watch any of Brett Favre's post-game interviews, it was every other interview. It was like I was telling Sid earlier this week. That yeah. phrase came out of Brett Favre's mouth more than anything else. The crazy part about it was Lavelle was on K-Fan and, you know, prior guest Lavelle and Neil III. Um, and he was talking about how when he was grinding and starting out, he contacted George Steinbrenner. And he, I don't know how, but he got through to George and Steinbrenner here. And Lavelle goes, 
hey, this is Lavelle Neal with the Star Tribune. I work with Sid. And he was like, you said the perfect words. Yeah. How can I help you? Yeah, you know, Steinbrenner just, and, and Sid were tight. That's yeah. the one thing that sucks with this whole COVID thing is they would have to open up like city blocks for the amount of people that would come to Correct. this funeral. And now he yeah. probably won't even get one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's sad. Super sad. What good, else you got? Good nuggets. Um, LSU football self-imposes penalties, bans Odell Beckham Jr. from facilities for two years. Um, LSU is self-imposing penalties for rule violations, hoping the NCAA, NCAA doesn't levy more. The school is docking itself eight football scholarships over the next two years. And also, like I stated, ban star Odell Beckham Jr., who distributed $2,000 worth of $100 bills during a wild scene that unfolded during the national championship game. Baltimore Ravens trade for Minnesota Vikings defensive end Yannick Ngakwe. The Baltimore Ravens have traded a third round pick and a 2022 conditional fifth round pick to the Vikings for Ngakwe. We obviously gave up a second round before the season. I think this was the smartest decision that Spielman's made in the past two years. You take him when, okay, you guys at the beginning of the season at draft day, all that were saying 10 and six, 11 and five. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So you bring in a guy, a pass rusher, an edge rusher, yep. who you can who can seal that up, do great things for you. Your season goes one and five, goes down the shitter. Okay, I get it. It happens all the time. So get rid of him for anything you can get for him because you're obviously not going to sign him at the end of this year. So yeah, you had to give up a second. You took you gave up a second round pick and you rolled the dice. It didn't work. So you get back a third round pick. Not the worst gamble anyone's ever taken. I was actually very happy with Spielman for cutting the cold when he did to still get something for him. Yeah, but I think he blew his load too early and gave it to a Ravens team where that third round pick is going to be at the end. Our second round pick is going to be potentially a top five in sure. the second round. Well, yeah. sure. So to me, I'm not giving it to Baltimore to help them win a championship for anything less than a second. I'm not. I'm getting back a second. I gave a second. But you lost. They, no, no, I'm not saying Minnesota. The Ravens don't get him for literally half the season. So right. they're looking That's at the only reason why we didn't get what we gave yeah. up. And I get it. He's a rental and you got to, but is he risk. a rental there too? He's a risk. There's still a risk. Cause you're going to have to try to figure out a contract. They've got so much money in so many different places and they've got Lamar's contract that will obviously come up soon enough. It just looks bad. You bring it. Oh, you yeah. bring him in. You give a second, oh, I get it. <laughs> you trade him. It's like, like I told Greg though, the key to this being an okay deal is if you make more deals. So yeah. now you started the dominoes. Kyle. This can't be the last one. Yeah. Right. You got to start shipping people off, and it's got to be a big picture thing. It can't be this little picture because I don't see it right now. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't see Rudolph being wrong past. The, Anthony the, Harris Anthony and Rudolph Harris. need to both yeah. be chips that go. Yeah. yeah. Even if that's it. Yeah. Sure. All right. So we've got uh, Daniil Hunter to have season ending neck surgery, um, herniated disc. He the decided, fuck out of here. got a second opinion. And there are thoughts that are rumors that he's going to ask for a restructure his of his contract. Is he's going to ask for and he's going to demand north of 27 million, which Joey Bosa is currently the highest paid at the position. I give it to him. Pay the man. Yeah. So, okay. So he'd be doubling his contract mm-hmm. year over year. He is, one of the top three defense players in the league. Yeah. Okay, I get that. But now he's got an injury history. And you're on, are you, so what, what the Vikings would be saying is, we're rebuilding, but he's the centerpiece of our we rebuilding. Don't, what is this injury? He's, he, he doesn't get, herniated get, disc. Okay, so I mean, he that, doesn't that's, get hurt, though. So it's not really. Joey Bosa gets hurt. Well, I'm, okay, I'm not comparing him to, just d- that's contract that you're comparing. I'm not, I didn't bring that up. What I'm saying is that you're, now making the centerpiece of your defense, mm-hmm. if it's $28 million a year, you're making the centerpiece a guy who had herniated disc issues, which, you know who else had those issues who had to retire? Peyton Manning. Oh, you I know, thought you were going to say Greg Bauman. No. Let's uh, run it. Mine was more of a, a collarbone issue. I see. Pay the man. Oh, look at that. Because he's Daniil. I love that view. That's, look a great at that. view. That's, a, that's a good view. And that's all I got for headlines, boys. That was great. Fuck off. Let's go. What we got next? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Cause I'm glad you asked. Cause next we are going from headlines to history. Time to get learned. H H. All right. 1861. West Virginia succeeds from Virginia. It's a very monumental. Day. 
history. 1908, Bill, Billy, excuse me, Billy Murray hits the charts with Take Me Out to the Ball Game. 1926, Harry Houdini's last performance at the Garrett Theater in Detroit, Michigan. Little Harry. Wisconsin boy. 1931, gangster Al Capone is sentenced to 11 years for tax evasion. That's, that's, all, that's all they'll get you. That's all they'll get you. 1938, U.S. forbids child labor in factories. That was a bad day in America right there. Yeah. That's been a good Oh, shit. Sad day. 1939, Joe DiMaggio wins AL MVP. Jimmy Fox is the runner-up. I was going to say, my dad never got that memo about child labor once. No, a lot of people still don't. 1962, Cuban Missile Crisis. Soviet ships approach but stop short of the U.S. blockade of Cuba. 1963, Sandy Koufax is the unanimous winner of the Cy Young Award. 1968, I like this one. Mick Jagger busted for pot, released on a $50 bail. In 1968. Yeah. Like, do you know who the fuck I am? Even back, even back then. Yeah. 50 bucks, you're out. Yeah. Move like Jagger. 1973, John Lennon sues the U.S. government to admit FBI is tapping his phone. 1978, Keith Richards convicted of heroin possession in Toronto. Here we go. See, now, now that's a went, rock star. That's now you went in 10 years. Now we're cooking. In 10 now. years, the Rolling Stones went from pot to hey, to the H. Yeah. yeah. Slippery slope, really? Greg. 1979, Guinness Book of Records presents Paul McCartney with a rhodium disc as all-time best-selling singer-songwriter. Good for you, Paul. Do you know what the, the most often stolen book from a library is Guinness. the Guinness, Guinness Book of World Records? Why, did you bust a bunch of people when you were security? No, I just... Put I, the Guinness down! Put the Guinness... No, I did not. Also in 1979, Billy Martin punches a marshmallow salesman. Puts job in jeopardy. You know Billy Martin? Yeah, the former manager of the A's, the Yankees. Yeah. So what I found interesting about this is there were marshmallow salesmen in 79. But they're selling Where? marshmallows. What do you mean? Marshmallow salesman? Whatever vendor has to bring it in. Oh, okay. That, I, what see, do you mean, I think a door to door marshmallow. Are you saying I'm not a salesman because I sell bread? No, Mike and I were kind of under the impression that some guy who's walking door to door selling vacuum cleaners in one yeah, hand yeah, and marshmallows yeah. in another. That's right? exactly how I picture it. Sure. 1982. You guys like this. Steffi Graf plays her first pro tennis match. Mrs. Andre Agassi. Yeah. Oh, that's sexist. 2018, <laughs> pipe bomb, <laughs> pipe bomb sent to prominent U.S. Democrats, including the Obamas, the Clintons, John Brennan, and CNN, safely diffused. Wow, oh, good. There you so, go. That's all I got. I don't want to see anyone. I don't want to see anyone go down on a pipe bomb. A pipe dream. All right, now we're going. We are going to kick it over to Jimmy G for his player to watch. Is it going to be a player or is it player? No, it's, this is player to watch. And this, is, this is Matt. Matt and I have been butting heads all week on this. Yeah. Player to watch, and here's my prediction. Yep. World Series MVP after Sunday night, the player to watch, Clayton Kershaw. He's I actually the good I asked Matt after before game one. He's I said, give shot. me 10 to 1 odds that Kershaw goes seven scoreless innings. And give me a hundred to one odds that he goes seven no hit. And what happened? He gave up one run in six innings. So you would Correct. have won, you would have won. Yeah. But ten to one odds for sure. seven scoreless. I thought those were great odds. I think that he's going to go out tomorrow night. So Sunday night, game five is that's next time time he's pitching. He's going to replicate that. Do the same thing. He's going to end up being the world because they're going to you know they're going to close it out then tomorrow sure. night. Sure. And he's going to be the World Series MVP after dealing with an entire career of just, you know, bad reputation because he's the greatest, you know, uh, regular season pitcher in the past 20, 25 years, you know, him and Verlander. And in, in the world's and in the playoffs, he just always just shit the bed. And I said this year, World Series time, he's going to light it up. He doesn't have the crowd. He doesn't have all the pressure. He's There's gonna, still fans there, Greg. 
There's what twelve hundred. There's quite a few. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll okay. get what you're saying. You get, you, so it's not the same. I mean, sure. you're you're playing in a neutral site in mm-hmm. Arlington, Texas. But my point is, is that I think that this is Kershaw's year, just like it was for John Elway. Um, you know, winning the two Super Bowls. Sure. You know, there's so many examples of it, but I think this is Kershaw's year. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it won't happen. You don't think so? No. Even if he gets a second W, it won't happen. Just because you've no, got I agree. you've got Taylor who's playing amazing. You got Mookie. Mookie's got, got one all, good game. Mookie played game one well. You've got all of these stars that play in every game. Yeah, but if you're if you're responsible for two of the four wins, did Verlander pitcher, win it when they won it? No, but he. I don't. Verlander, Verlander didn't go six one six innings of one hit ba- or one one baseball. Mm. I'm saying he's got to duplicate. I get what, he what did. you're saying. I don't. I don't see it happen. Okay. All right. But okay. Cool. Good. Next. Yeah, that's a good player to watch. Though, right? Yeah. Great. I great like one. that player to watch. And now we're gonna keep things rolling with Would You Rather. Ooh. No that. bracket this week. We will be bringing the bracket next week for our Halloween edition show. But this week, would you rather? <laughs> Have you done these ones already on your on your show? Or yep. These? Would you rather vomit uncontrollably for one minute every time you hear the happy birthday song or get a headache that lasts for the rest of the day every time you see a bird, including in pictures or a video? The vomit. Vomit, yeah. I can control where I am when I hear happy birthday. Right. I can just be but shouted. But uncontrollably vomiting. Sure. Well, when you hear happy birthday. So I'll carry a bucket around. But, you know, how often I do you don't hear wanna, it? I'm not picking anything where I, when I puke, it's bad. Yeah, but I don't want to get a headache every time I go outside. Yeah, don't, I, hate I can control seeing birds. How? Look down. Yeah, but it's, you, you said on TV or anything. How, How many fucking the- birds do you see on TV, <laughs> Greg? When's the last time you saw a bird on TV? <gasps> Probably the last time well, I watched ostrich, TV. That ostrich, that ostrich, the emu, emu. Oh, yeah. And Doug. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Great. Pet. That's good. All right. So <laughs> two headaches and a vomit. Would you rather eat a sandwich made from four ingredients in your fridge chosen at random? Oh, that would be a good sandwich. Or eat a sandwich made by a group of your friends from four ingredients in your fridge. So random four things. Greg goes and picks it out or Matt and Mike make a sandwich out of four things in your fridge. A week ago, I would have said just four random things. But now that I don't live alone anymore, <laughs> and I'm not a huge fan of mayonnaise and oh, dressings and things ew. like that, it's a little riskier. But I would still. How take are we friends? I don't get the it. sauce like man over here. I just don't like mayonnaise. You're crazy. Anything else? I'm I would okay definitely with. let you guys make the sandwich because I know it's going to be. What do you mean? You know, before the show today, I stopped at the gas station. I picked up. A diet wild cherry Pepsi. Because I know the man needs a wild cherry diet wild cherry Pepsi. Oh, thank you. That's his fucking shit. So that I know is. you guys are going to put meats. I can't believe you would leave mayo off of it. But if you did, you did. I wouldn't do that to you. I know you wouldn't. And that's the thing. We're, we got good friends. So yeah. I wouldn't. I'm not I'm not 20 year old Mike anymore who would have fucked you yeah. dry. See, I think that you would. <laughs> I think you'd like my fridge because I got enough. Sriracha and stuff like that. That would. Oh, now you have sriracha because I fucking bought you a bottle. Well, I, had to buy, I had to buy more since then. I go through that a lot. See, I introduced him and he loves it now. Fuck. Good. All right. Would you rather everyone be required to wear identical silver jumpsuits? Oh, fuck. I forgot to ask Tommy. He said he used to be a Jordan guy. What happened? Oh, he still is. I'm sure he is. It said used to. Silver jumpsuits or any time. To- okay, let's restart this. Would you rather everyone be required to wear identical silver jumpsuits or anytime two people meet and we're wearing an identical article article of clothing, they must fight to the death? I remember this one from my show. I'll go with silver jumpsuits because I'm not a fan of fighting to the death. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with silver jumpsuits as well, unfortunately, because we own plenty of the Saints, pull, the Saints zip up. I wouldn't want to fight you to the death. Yeah, and that's just for an identical article of clothing. So back in the day buffet, we used to have a rule where if you copped it first, it was over. Correct. Right? Yeah. And uh, so up until recently, shout out Mike Steen. Steen! Steen. Uh, 
saw that I had a shirt that he had. And he went, wah, 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 wah. I'm like, bro, I'm fucking 35 years old. Like, I got my, I'm not playing the fucking high school fucking no. outfit game anymore. And if you want to fight to the death, I'll kill you. Yeah. You motherfucker. I don't know. Steen's, so I'd, Steen's got a little bit of a reach for you. I mean, you guys got some arms. Steen's yeah. had about 13, 14 already, so I don't want to hear it. No. So I want to fight Clanky to the claws. death. I'm you, fighting to the death. You, so, well, you you also take a lot more pride in what you wear. I do. If I see motherfucker like you, yeah, I'll fight him to the death, and then I'll fucking pick up javelin. Yeah, I'll pick up what he's yeah, got but, on and take it for a backup. Yeah, but keep in, in mind, eventually, up. eventually, we're gonna have 50 G's inside stadiums again, and you're gonna be sharing a Justin Jefferson jersey with some big dude who's like my he will not, no, because he wears be, Sir Mike. I'll be wearing my Sir Mike. Thank you. Custom stitch. Would you rather be a famous director or a famous actor? Actor. 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 Would you rather be a practicing doctor or a medical researcher? Doctor. Doctor. Would you rather live in a cave or live in a treehouse? Lived in both. <laughs> Which one you want to know? What do you want to know about? <laughs> what was what life in the cave? What was the life cave like is cold. Cave? You don't want to live in a cave. Was there a bear in there? Was Yogi no. in there? It was a, it was a little it was a so it was a crevice. No, it was more of like an igloo made of stone. Half, you know what I mean. So it wasn't like in it was a cave. It, Greg. it, wasn't it was like, a fucking cave, like Castaway, where you were drawing pictures of Taylor on the no, wall. No, I just crashed there a couple nights. It's safe. What's it but like in a cold. treehouse? Treehouse is great. Yeah, I'd much rather <laughs> live in mean? a treehouse. You're up out of the elements. Haven't you seen Step Brothers? He's got like yeah. porn stashed. Anytime in there you're and... gonna sleep outside, I strongly suggest getting off the ground. <laughs> All right, simply because there's dew, condensation, you're going to get wet, you're going to get cold, the ground is cold. Right. You get off the ground, you're sitting. Through. All right, well, I'll take your word for it. Life yeah. lessons for when your life goes off the tracks. Yeah, yeah we're on the tracks. I'm definitely, <laughs> if I get a house, I'm building the treehouse. Would you rather be able to control fire or water? I'm going to go with, uh, I don't know. Fire. Fire seems more of like, cool. More, fire seems like more fun. You know, fire. Like the flame guy from... Uh, Fantastic I think I'd four? rather control water. What would you so do? So either you're put out the fire, splash people. No, I mean if you can control water, you could maybe clean the water. So either you're, then you're boring, you're, you're, Michigan. You're either the human flame the from game. Fantastic Four or you're Aquaman. I'm a humanitarian, man. Yeah. Next, they're, they're both stupid. Yeah. yeah. Would you rather live without the internet or live without Whatever the other one is AC and heating? Oh, AC and heating. I, I would rather live without the internet. I'd rather live without AC. I and need heat. my yeah. AC and heat. It's you do. It's such a luxury. I would go to. I've I would lived just, without both. Yeah, you and I've cave, lived without in cave, internet. Yeah. Or the cave didn't have Wi Fi. I live without a phone, and I'm telling you right now, unplugging is a lot better than not having heat and not plugged in. But you were living in Minnesota when you were doing all that. Why don't you just move to when? North Carolina? No, where it's always I temperate. Live, I w- I had this problem in California. Yeah, he couldn't sleep on the beach. Horrible. Beach well, is cold. Wish he had heat. Yeah. During the day, it's hot as fuck. Without a phone, what? Would you rather be able We've to- We've lived without internet and phone, Greg. I know. It was fine. But I've been conditioned to yeah, need no, it. Yeah, I need oh, it. God, whatever. Would you rather be able to teleport anywhere- Yep. Yep. Or be able to read minds? Teleport. Teleport. I don't want to know what you're thinking. Yeah. Me neither. Yeah. Would you rather I'm be already unable to use search engines- So Google- Mm-hmm. Or unable to use social media. Social media. Social media. Hundred percent social Correct. media. Yeah. That's all I got. Beautiful. Fuck faces. The best part of that segment was Matt's survival tips by far. And now we're gonna move on to the NFL pick'em segment. Correct. Who you got? All right. At least you're above me. After s- after six full weeks. Has he been telling you? No, he's seen it. Well, no, you guys are tied, actually. What? After week six, Matt and Mike are both 15, 15 and zero. 500. GBG, Rip it. 18, 12, and zero. So three games up. Were you three games last week, too? So we gained no, zero I was, ground. I was, I was two games up. You gained a game to game. Yeah, you guys, the game I, yeah, because you guys all split it with me, and I actually, so yeah, I won on the Broncos, where you guys lost on the Patriots. We all won the Steelers. We, um, you guys won on the Chiefs. Fuck off, Greg. Let's just okay, next. All right, you so, how'd you gain a game then if we both won and you lost one? Because I won on the Vikings. Okay, next. Or the Falcons. I mean, you guys took the Vikings. I you took, took the, Falcons. the Falcons? Yeah. 
I'll never take the Vikings again. I'll never game that. one this week: Steelers at Titans. Steelers. Steelers are one and a half point favorites. Steelers. Matt's taking. Wait, the st- Steelers are not favorites. Steelers are one and a half point. Oh, are favorites. we going off of when you? We're going. Off, I I told you guys we're going off yeah. a Wednesday morning on fan. Du- yeah, because it changes. Okay. But yeah, that we're okay. going off when he does it. Yeah. So so I'm always picking the same day. Same Love time. you too, Chief. Chief. Uh, I know Matt he loves you and left me. I know. I love you too, Chief. Fucking You're a great man. Chopped liver. I know. Now my dad. Now now he's gonna make a comment. I love you too, Mike. And I'm sitting here like that's my fucking dad. No, this is bullshit. Want to mention me every now and again? Anyway, Steelers at Titans. Steelers are one and a half point favorites. I don't Steelers. even fucking care, Greg. Matt Steelers. Steelers. Matt, Matt gets. Oh hi, Chief. Oh hi, Taylor. Yeah. Oh. People love me, man. Okay, Mike. Who do you like? Steelers. Titans. I'm going with the Titans. One and a half point Steelers. So you're taking the Titans to win. Yeah, I'm taking the Titans and one in the hook. Minus one and a half. I means get they're favored. Saying. Yep, Steelers. I Seahawks. That. Seahawks at Cardinals. Seahawks are three and a half point favorites. I'm taking the Hawks. I'll take the Cardinals. See, I'm even giving. I'm even. I'll take the get, Seahawks. I'm even showing you guys who I'm picking. You guys can't beat me. 49ers at Patriots. Patriots, two and a half point favorites. I'm going to go. I'm going 49ers. Give me the two and a half. Patriots. Matt. Niners. So Matt's either going to catch up or be way behind. Yeah. Him. Buccaneers at Raiders, which is now an earlier game. Thank it you. is. Thank it you, got COVID. bumped. Uh, but that's cool. I'd much rather watch our boy, boy Kyler, yeah, at Sunday night. Yes, yeah, that was that was funny. Where the NFL is like, no, we want to guarantee there's a game. In other words, Major League Baseball, go fuck yourselves. We're not going to give you a night. Yeah, um, love that. Buccaneers at Raiders. Buccaneers two and a half point favorites. I am Bucks. My hat is going. I'm going to go Bucks too. I'm going Bucks. All right. Packers at Texans. Packers are three and a half point favorites. Pack. Pack. Pack and pack. All right, there you go. Here I yeah, come. Vikes bye week. Here I come. All right. Fuck. There you All go. Right. Woo! There it is. Oh, look at that. Mama Benz, love you, Greg and Mike. That's right. Hey, Maddie, suck it. Yeah. That's all right. Mama's. Hey. Mama just went. Mouth, Greg. Mama just went to go get some pumpkins, and Ooh, then uh, like I'm gonna pumpkins. make some. I, want, I should ask. I'm her. gonna make some bean dip, and I'm Girls. gonna head over there after the game. Pumpkins she's gonna, and bean dip. I'm out. I wonder if Mama Benz got. She has them because she's gonna carve them Friday for the trip or treat. And then she's gonna Kevin's make some. Kevin's waiting to talk. Rollo cheesecake, Mama Benz. Oh fuck you. <laughs> Go ahead, Tevin. <laughs> the only thing more controversial than who is most loved on the Twist Sports Talk Show by the other people's parents. By the other people's parents is the very, very controversial fantasy league that we are all in. Yeah. So it's time for the fantasy transition. All right, I do too. So I fucking beat Greg. Yes! I fucking beat Greg. Yes! 103.4 to 95.14 yeah. to move to 2 and 4. Greg is four and two, mm-hmm. and uh, Ben's beat Tevin. Mm-hmm. So we're tied at the bottom, Tevin, at two and four. And Benzie and GBG. Actually, Matt's three. Face each other. No, he's four and two. Oh, mm-hmm. big dog fight for first place. Yeah. So, right? No, he was three. Yeah. yeah. I need a backup tight end. So we're going to look at that right now. So. As of now, let's start with my team. So Deshaun Watson in. is playing. Miles Sanders out. Out. JT out. Devontae Adams in. Julio in. Kittle in. So I need two running backs. So let's move on to Greg. Lamar Jackson. Bye. Bye. And your backup is A Raj. In. So Ezekiel Elliott in. In. Derrick Henry in, in. D-Hop in, Amari Cooper in, in. Darren Waller uh, in. 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 So Greg is good with his backups. Everything is fine. Benzie Mahomes. In. Josh Jacobs. In. Aaron Jones. Questionable, yeah, but yeah. if not, you do have James Connor, Connor now. Yep. So you're covered there. Tyree Kill, DJ Moore, Travis Kelsey. In. You're covered. Yep. So I figured you two were. Tevin and I, I don't believe, are. So Kyler Murray. In. Delvin Cook, out. but you subbed Robinson, so you got him. 
Yep. And then Mixon is out, but you have Kamara. Yep. And he's in. And correct. Okay. Perfect. So then Michael Thomas, if out. he's not, he's, he's out. out. You got yep. Kelvin Ridley, you got Evans, and you got Mark Andrews. So you're good. So I just need two running backs. Yeah. Because my, yeah, my fucking Your backups team. aren't even in? No, oh. my backup was Miles Sanders. Correct. Oh, that's right. And my other backup was Jonathan Taylor, that's who right, had to take over as my full-time starter because I lost. That's right, because you had CFC and Barkley. Yeah. So let me and just. Uh, you are the plague. I hope you don't choose anybody that is on any of my fantasy teams because they're getting hurt this week. Oh, my God. So let's just. You might as well take like Frank Gore, uh, don't the take, infinite one. Don't take Kareem Hunt. <laughs> take Kareem Hunt. Yeah, great pick. Well, we're going to see here. Oh, so. I need Kareem Hunt. All, all running back. Sure. It's great radio. It's yeah. Great radio. Yeah, fuck off. So I am going to take Kareem Hunt. Sure. Yep. I are. COVID. Against uh, Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals. And uh, might as well take Giovanni Bernard, too. Oh, that's a great villain. That's no, a great I ain't doing Gio that. the stash? Are you kidding me? I ain't doing that. And then uh, watch him go for forty points this week. David Johnson, Kenyon. No, I think Ricky Williams is available. Is Ricky, he? Yeah, he's smoking a blunt. It's legal now in the NFL, though. He can. Chris Melvin Cooper. Gordon the third. He's you got him. Chris Carson. Yeah, Chris Carson. Yeah, there you go. Good. All right, brilliant. Let's go. Only four weeks left. The regular season. Yep. I like that. So, Tevin, we need to make a big run. Yeah. Yep. I'm definitely trying to get off the uh, the bottom of the this league. <laughs> yeah. ASAP. I like being on the bottom sometimes, but <laughs> not in this. Moving <laughs> 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 on, then, uh, from Mike's preferences into the bedroom. Oh, to sometimes. The twist topics of the week. Love it. Uh, and for your information, Twist Nation, I didn't say anything about the Bengals. No, he didn't. That was Tevin's dirty, Tevin, dirty mouth. Get your mind out of the All right, we're going to end this show with some twist topics Let's here. Let's do that. Before we uh, get dipshit's final thought. Yeah. All right, so I was thinking about this. We uh, we touched on this on another show on the All Access Sports Network. And I forgot about Bricks. Bricks Boltworks. Oh. How dare I? Bricks. My dad was just talking about that. He didn't even know Bricks was in Shockby. I'm a I'm a resident of Shockby, Minnesota, and he was like, man, he was winterizing his boat the other day, and he's like, I heard you guys have a sponsor. Bricks we do Boatworks Bricks Boatworks. Yep. So get on to MN Dock and Lift. Yep. Click on the Otter for all of your ice fishing outdoor needs. Promo code. Promo code twist for five percent off your okay. order. And if you were dumb enough not to get your boat winterized or stored, and it's just in the You're snow, tripping. you better get it on the trailer and get it down to bricks. Bricks boat works. Appreciate you. Yep. Uh, so I was thinking about this first topic, and uh, Tom Brady's old man. Yeah, yes. It's not like when the Vikes got Brett Favre, and he still had some gas in the tank mm. for that one year. Okay. Oh nine, he sure. did. Yeah. Um, but I keep looking at this Bucks team, and I keep thinking they'd be better off with Jameis. So would the Bucks be better off having kept Jameis over bringing in Tom Brady? No, because I think that the only thing that they needed to do was have more possessions in a game, and Jameis did not afford them that by having thirty plus turnovers. Um, I think that if nothing else, even if Tom Brady is a shell of what he used to be, which obviously he is, mm. that, he's, okay, he's not the quarterback from 10 years ago is my point. Sure. Is I think that him being able to protect the ball with the offense gives them more opportunities to win, which is why they beat, which is why they beat the Packers. First quarter and a half, Aaron Rodgers going down no, the field. 10 nothing. You know, going down the field. So then Tom Brady then comes in and, you know, Score after score after score after yeah, score, and then they, they they took it to him. Correct. You have Jameis here throwing three t three interceptions. I don't think that uh, thirty picks is an every year thing. No, but I'm still gonna ride with Tom because Tom is Tom. You Even love Jameis. I love Jameis. Yes, but I feel like for this team, like kind of like what Greg was saying, the less mistakes you make, ball is the program for Tampa Bay, and as long as they keep possession of the ball, they're good to go. Yeah, I would have wrote it out with Jameis. 
you know, I think he's too young. You drafted him. I get it. Tom Brady, shiny new car, goat, blah, old blah, car, blah. Cadillac. But he's fucking old, man. And and I think especially bringing in, you got your Fournette and you got your AB. It's like, yeah, you got to let these guys loose. And Tom, they're on a chain because they can't go too far because you can't throw it there. It's like I sure. would I think they would have been better overall keeping Jameis. I, I don't think that 30 touchdown thing was an every year deal is naming Tua. Tongue of Iloa. Good job. Thank you. The starter, the right move in MIA. Fitzmagic stats for the season. Yeah, let's hear it. Three and three. Seventy percent completion percentage. Ooh, nice. Fifteen hundred plus yards. Mm. Seven point eight yards per attempt. Mm. Ten touchdowns, seven picks. In his mm. last two games, he went for six touchdowns and over five hundred yards on their two game winning streak. I think that this is the perfect timing. In a perfect world, this is exactly when they wanted to do it because they have the bye week. You have Fitz that kind of showed him the ropes. Fitz actually treated him like a younger brother. Fitz knew that this was his role. And you're still in a position where you're going to be competitive. But let's be realistic. Maybe you're a year away with the way that Buffalo and New England are both playing. You know, they could hit lightning in a bottle, but I think this was the idea. Let him watch the speed of the NFL from the sidelines. And then after the bye week, and so now he's got, what, 10, 12 days, whatever, between games. He can, okay, acclimate himself into the role. And whatever happens, happens. But I think it's obvious now that he's not injury prone. or that's it, the, Well, it's the, not the, obvious because he hasn't been out there. But I, well, I 100%, I 100 yeah, I percent agree with you that this was their plan all along. We're going to roll him out after the bye. Mm-hmm. Unless there's an injury to Fitzmagic or something like that. Because you have to see... You have to see what you got in him this year. Sure. Over a long period of time, over half a season. Because it's also going to determine who you draft next well, year. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. No, I'm not talking quarterback. No, but... Does he need more offensive linemen? Does he need more wide receiver? Yeah. Help? Yeah. I How does saying. this look now yeah. with Tua? Yeah. You broke a guy with the beard's heart, and that's unacceptable. He was a ride or die. He felt like this team was his team. He understood that Tua was the future. But you don't pull the plug on a guy that's got the hot hand in any sport. You yeah. ride the hot hand. Tua's time will come the longer you give him between injuries, and you don't bring him back again to for his first game starting to go against Aaron Donald, who is going to Why snap not? him in half. Because three and three in third place in a four team division isn't the hot hand. Yeah. The last two games he, he was, was a the place, hot hand. He was a placeholder. Yes, 100%. I understand that, but why are you rushing it? And the fact that the beard came out and said, my heart hurts and this and that, it's yeah. like, you fucking Sally bitch. You knew this was coming. Fuck. You knew this wasn't your team. Like Greg said, you're a placeholder. Yeah, he was a fucking placeholder at my Superflex, too. Yeah, n- now Tua yeah. came in for a perfect time because... Fuck, I gave up a good fucking pick for this motherfucker. Gave Terry McLaurin to me straight up. Really? Yeah. Wow. Terry McLaurin's di- looking, he's looking pretty good In right now. In a dynasty. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Appreciate it. Thanks. Who you got? Michigan or Sky Yuma? So Michigan is 75 and 25, 75, 25 and 3 against us. Okay. Ooh. They have won 33. They won 33 to 10 in Ann Arbor in 2017. Minnesota's last home win against Michigan was in 1977. At the Met. CMC's brother, Dylan McCaffrey, was QB and opted out. And they are starting Joe Milton, not Mixon, Milton, Milton. who is a dual-threat quarterback. Is he a brother? Yeah. Mix. Yep. 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 It just doesn't sound like it. It gets me on the Jeff Gladney. Sounds like... Joe Milton. Joe Milton sells marshmallows door to door. Hundred percent vacuum cleaners. Hundred percent. Um, so I'm very excited. I think that it's a big day for the Gulfs in retrospect of actually having people returning to their squad. And I think that cohesiveness will roll over into this season. I think Tanner Morg, past guest, will yeah. will fucking rise up. And he is a gamer. Yeah, he's a gamer. Nothing's too big. You got Bateman back. You got Agent Mo Zero. Money, Mo Ibrahim, which you're going to hear a lot of today. Yeah, you are. Because he's going to be going Ground berserk, and pound. Even though that defensive line is very, very That defense stout, is great. But with Daniel Falalele. Falalele. 6'8", 320. Future first round pick. Second. We'll see. But still. 6'9". Excuse me. 6'9". Maybe six. Yeah. Ten. He's fucking huge. 
You got any comments on this? Goldie by six. Okay. What's yours? Pretty Ten. Good. I've got Gophers 31, Wolverines 26. So by five. Yep. Yeah. Bro, the boat, Scotty Ma. Go Gophers! And they covered this, cover the over. Thank God. Uh, so last one here. <laughs> Uh, I was going to talk about the World Series, but I don't care. Yeah. So wash. this was my rant a while back. Yeah. Washington football team plans to keep the name for the 2021 season. Are they fucking completely incompetent? Yes. So the reason they went with Washington football team is so they would have enough time to lay out the rebrand. Yeah. And, uh, but no, the now they're just going to push it another year? Okay, there's only one of two reasons why they're doing this. Either A, they don't like, have a clue. Like like you guys are saying, they don't have a clue. Correct. Or maybe they're actually making a lot of money on merchandise by having this blank concept. It's it's that, you know, that one-off, goofy. Correct. But that people can have for nostalgia. It. But if, but, but you if don't they, think they would make more if they actually rebranded to a they fucking would, team? You do it one more year, everyone gets the Washington football team. Then you roll out the Senators or the Nationals no. or whatever, and then you resell all that crap. No. You just do it now. You should have done it now because that's what would have made it a rarity. And the rare shit sells... Nobody's going to fucking fall for They're that. fucking horrible. If they even have any more fans next year. If I'm a quarterback and you draft, I'm saying I'm not going to a no-name team. Yeah. How yeah. am I going to market? Let's get the Red Wolves going. Let's no, get I them like howling. The Red no. Let's Red Wolves travel stupid. in that's the pack. Stupid. Senators. Yeah, that's cool. Come on. Like from the Nobody movie. likes a senator. Uh, yeah. Right. Fucking twist topics, bitches. Nice. Run it. So, and, and just a quick question for you guys. Oh, Do you fuck. think that it could be that Dan Snyder is trying to kind of drag his feet because he's got plans of trying to regain the nickname back? Because he oh, dragged zero, his feet Zero percent chance that name comes back. But Tom Brenneman's back. So anything yeah. is possible. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Gaslers, keep your job. All right, now it's time for GBG to put a wrap on the show. Hit us with your final thoughts. Okay, so next week's episode is going to be more fun, lighthearted, Halloween edition, a little off the cuff. <laughs> so this will be our last regular show before the election. And, okay, so... Oh, here's there's going to be a lot of election talk. Here's week. the thing. Most people post stuff on social media, and they expect people like me to, I don't know, be influenced by what they say. Here's my, here's my plan. When, it, when someone asks me, or if you want to know, GBG, who you voting for? Here's what I'm doing. Taking all my social media, and I'm looking at everyone. The big pile of people who post stuff all the time about social media, about support candidate A, support candidate B. And I'm going to take those people, and I'm going to dissect your lives. And if all the people that support candidate A, or a majority of them, have good paying jobs, are respectful, take care of their family, um, are respectful of the community, those, a majority of those people vote for candidate A, Okay, but can they be? If your life is a dumpster fire, you can't take care of yourself. You can't, you know, find a, a full time job at forty hours a week. But you support can they be? You know who I'm going to vote for? Can they a? Because I'm going to look at you and I'm going to think to myself. I don't want to be like you. And if I have to support your candidate, well, you know what? Not a good road to go down. So here's my thought. While you're trying to tell everyone else on this planet who to vote for, I'm basing my vote on who you are. That's all I got. Fuck yeah. Fuck. Demon Cash! Thank you for tuning in to episode 45. Thank you, Tommy Olsen. Thank you, Bricks Boatworks. Next week, no sports twist. So yeah. we can shit talk. Halloween yeah. edition. We'll be here in our costumes. All sports with a twist. Twist nation. We talking sports with a twist, no script. No script. Legends coming through on the guest list. Let's get it. TC Minnesota, land of the lakes, Boo Green Bay. That's all I gotta say. Yelling skull with the woes, you know we don't play. We get wild every single day. We got our flaws, but we love our saints. Twist nation. Twist nation.